Florida City of Forest Park Council Meeting Number 1383, Monday, October 18, 2021. Let's stand for the pledge, please. show that all council members are present. Item number two is the minutes. You would have all received a copy of the minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? <coughs> Hearing none, the minutes will stand approved as presented. Item number three is a presentation, business of the month. Mr. Paul Brim. Mayor, members of council, thank you very much. Um, we're very fortunate tonight. This month, we're happy to welcome yet another new business to the city of Forest Park, El Asadero Mexican Bar and Grill. The restaurant recently completed a major renovation of a vacant building at Parkwood Plaza near Walmart, and you'll certainly be impressed with the improvements. They made a significant investment to create a warm and inviting atmosphere. If you've been there yet, you'll know it's much brighter, much more colorful than its predecessor was. So it's a very different place now, very nice. Uh, with a varied menu that includes all of your favorites, the restaurant features an authentic char-grilled experience. Their outstanding menu includes specialty margaritas. Don't ask me why I led with the margaritas. Uh, enchiladas, burritos, quesadillas, fajitas, and table-side guacamole service, all served in a truly modern and unique dining experience. And I, I have to say, I was talking with the... Uh, owner Omar tonight. Uh, my wife and I were there over the weekend. She's uh, kind of a picky eater. Uh, actually found they have lettuce wrap tacos, which is something very different and unique, and, and she enjoyed it. It was very, very good. So um, we encourage everybody to stop by soon and discover what our newest restaurant here in Forest Park has to offer. And in recognition of their investment and their commitment to the city, we are proud to recognize El Asadero Mexican Bar and Grill as our October 21st Business of the Month and welcome them to the City of Forest Park. With that, I'd like to invite Mr. Espinosa up to accept his award. On behalf of the City of Forest Park and City Council, we are honored to um, give you this award and want to say thank you for choosing Forest Park as your place of business. We really appreciate it and hope you're here for many, many years. And I will come in and try some of those spirits. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I will say um, it is very colorful, even though I'm colorblind. I know the uh, the blue and the white, right? Yeah, uh, that was it's nice, very nice. Okay. The next item on the agenda then would be item number four: communications from the public. Uh, this is a time for citizens to comment on matters before council or to ask questions of concern to them. When recognized, please come forward to the podium, give your name and address, and then state your comments or questions. Council me meetings are taped, for, recorded for either transcription. Comments are limited to five minutes. So if there's someone who wants to address council, just come and sign in up there and tell us who you are and what your concern is. And while they're doing that, I will say uh, this is the quilting club. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I knew it. Yeah, I knew. And by the way, for <clears throat> just for the public while they're doing that, if you have not ever seen the quilts that they make, you got to go look. It's fair. They make them, they, they, they make them custom to order. And they make any and all kind. They can put anything on them. If you have a 
new grandchild that you want the pictures put on there, they can do it. Believe me, I, I've seen their work. Uh, it takes more patience than I would ever have. And the other thing that they do is they will teach you how to do it if you don't know. And if you're like me, you don't know. But if you want to learn, you want to make one of those quilts like your grandma g used to make and gave you to keep that you lost somewhere and want to replace, there it. Ladies. My name is uh, Gwendolyn Green. I've been a resident of Forest Park since 1969. And I've been over ever since they built the um, senior facility. I've been coming over there to line dancing and quilting and, you know, some of the other activities that they have. The reason I'm here tonight is my concern about an email that I saw from, from Jay, Mr. Jay Dennis about the... Um, Wrong one. Okay. The sewing classes, which is on Wednesdays and Thursdays, it says it has been canceled for the remainder of the year. Now, I am, I understand that the lady who was teaching us, at this point, we don't need a teacher, but I mean, well, I won't say that, but um, we can carry on by ourselves, is what I want to say. Um, so she's going to be out until next year. And I wanted to let the council and Mr. Dennis know that we're going to be there. We want to be there. We intend to be there. We've started some projects. We were there last week, and we're going to continue to come. Now, one of the other concerns I had, I don't know how true it is, they said that the room that we use, the conference room, you know where it is, Chuck, the conference room that we use is where we do our sewing, and we set up, and they have, there are tables there, and we lay our work out on there. We bring our own sewing machines and things, and we sew there. Uh, I was told that uh, this is going to be a, an area that where they're going to be eating food. We'll take care of all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to have to be separate. If, if that's where you guys have your class, then we'll need to make separate yes. arrangements. Okay. Well, that's all I want to know. I just we'll be in there without a teacher. Yes. Just want the to classes be canceled. Okay. Unless you want to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to continue. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take care of that. I don't know. We, we, we help each other. We help each other out. I'm working know? on something right now. Yeah. And we just help each other. That they've done, and I haven't. And then they're work she's working on something that I've done, and Florence has done. We just help each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah we'll okay. have an area that we'll make an area where we can have food. All right. Yeah, Appreciate it. Okay. Don't, don't leave yet. Uh, so have the other two ladies introduce themselves. No, no, I'm just standing for support. <laughs> I know, I know, but tell us who you are. She said, tell who you are. Miss Smitty, tell us who you are. I'm Lauren Smith. <laughs> I know quite well. I know, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> Emma Smith. I'm so glad you're here. I, I, I needed you. I need you here a lot of times. <laughs> Keep certain people in line. <laughs> My name is Cynthia McGinnis, and I'm originally from Mich Michigan. Moved to Forest Park in 1989. And my address, do I need to say that? Yeah. Oh, okay then. That's okay. it. All right. Thank you, ladies. And the quilt that looks like that. We will take care of you. We, we will. We will take care of that for you. Right, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you said they teach the classes. Do they work with the, any of the kids from? No, this is strictly uh, the uh, seniors. Yeah, this is strictly seniors. And I didn't put my phone number up there, but I could. Okay. But just make sure you, uh, I got it. Okay. Okay, anybody else, anybody else from the public want to address the council? Mrs. Mr. Smith. Uh, my name is Irvin Smith. I happen to be, this is my lovely, kind, considered, understanding, and compassionate wife. And uh, compassionate. I repeat, very compassionate. <laughs> Look, uh, I've noticed that there have been some changes in reference to the doors and the locks. I don't know when it's going to be completed. 
will the membership be uh, involved in any way or will they be notified when the changes are going into effect and what will they, we do as members of the center? Uh, we have to wait on you all to do it or what, how will it be done? We're updating all the locks in the city. Um, those, those will also be updated as well and they work off of one of these. Basically it's a key card so we're going to issue key cards for all the members, which will be a membership card as well as a key card for the door. And it'll be programmed to open in certain times when the building's open and people can come and go with using their key cards. So that would be the only way someone can get in the building is with a key card? Yes. Okay, the reason I'm asking... I mean, we could open the doors, but we've, 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 the feedback we have is it's... Right now, we just give people a key, and they, they're open, and they can come and go, but technically, it's members only, so if you've got a key card, you should be a member. That should be good enough to get in and out. But there are other people who visit the center from Forest Park who are seniors. How do they get in? For instance, they want to rent the facility. We have people that come in. In fact, we had two gentlemen the other week come down and go all the way downstairs looking for the tax department. Well, they won't be able to do that because the door will be locked. Well, somebody may let them in. That's the way they got in. That's what I'm saying, exactly. Yeah. So I, I don't know what can be done about that, but sometimes other people in the city who want to see mm -hmm. their senior center might want to come in and inspect, even whether they are members or not. Yeah. So you're going to exclude them? No, we're not going to exclude them. If they want to come in and take a look at it, they can come in. But they're going to have to come in through either a, me a member bringing them in or here. Or come up here and yeah, speak right. to us, and we'll go down and let them in and okay. walk them through. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from anybody from the public? Hearing none, thank you all. And as usual, this is the time when usually our visitors can feel free to leave. You can stay if you like, but if you want to go, feel free to do that. And thank you, ladies, for coming. We appreciate that. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Item number five, reports of standing committees. The first committee is Community Development Committee, Councilwoman Dr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I want to say I'm so excited for the city of Forest Park. Um, we recently, um, um, the city manager, Mr. Jones, and I um, attended an OKI meeting. Um, I am the liaison for OKI. And our city, the city of Forest Park, recently got a $278,000 grant, $278,000 and $235,000 for traffic control improvement. And so we were so excited to be um, one of the top five um, uh, communities um, scoring very high. It was very competitive. So I just want to thank uh, Mr. Jones, his staff, public work department, our finance department, and our staff to make this happen. And so we're just so excited to have some improvement in our community regarding traffic control. And we're hoping to do more grants um, in the future. And thank you, OKI. Um, we really appreciate um, <coughs> looking at our application. Um, and so we're very um, honored to be one of the recipients of that grant. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, I, I would say that Mr. Jones, Dr. Moore, for uh, representing us with OKI in a uh, very, very <coughs> and very uh, vehemently pushing forward the, 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 um, the story of Forest Park. So we want to thank her for everything she does on the board there, or with OKI. And uh, it's going to be a very good project. Basically, it will allow us to uh, redo uh, all of our signals, not necessarily the heads, but in the, the traffic control devices in the, in the street. It becomes very expensive <coughs> over, over time. And... Uh, uh, they're really hard to replace, and ours are old, and they need to be replaced. So this allows us basically to uh, take and loop the entire system uh, and get it all done at once. So it's going to be a great project for us, much needed, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to do that with uh, OKI's help. Thank you. Any questions for Councilwoman Dr. Moore? <clears throat> Dr. Moore, for the work session of the 25th, I have no item for you. Do you have any to add? Uh, no, I do not. Thank you.
makes a report as human resources, Vice Mayor Hope. I do not have a re uh, human resource report, <coughs> but I would just like to send my condolences out. They won't hear it for the Colin Powell's family and his loss. With that, it would conclude my um, report. Thank you. I have one item uh, <clears throat> on the agenda for you uh, that you've given to us. This is the time of year when we uh, do evaluation contracts. So for the next meeting, we'll have the uh, clerk of court contract. <clears throat> okay. Next item is item C, uh, law committee, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have uh, no um, report at this time, nor do I have any items to add to the agenda. Next, I, next report is Public Improvement and Facilities, Mr. Sylvester. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, only thing to comment on is that uh, we have a resolution to pass uh, and be yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Sylvester, I don't have any items for you. Do you have anything to add for the next week? Uh, no, sir. Next committee report is Public Safety Committee, Councilwoman Clark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do not have a report to add, nor do I have anything to add to the work session. I have no items on the agenda for you for the next meeting. Next report, item F, Ways and Means Committee, Councilman Hurdon. Um, yes, two redevelopment projects that were recently discussed by City Council are moving forward as planned. Megan Construction is going to be holding a groundbreaking for its expansion of the company's Forest Park headquarters at the end of this month. And we want to thank the county commissioners and HCDC for helping us secure this incentive to facilitate this project. Additionally, Mullaney's Guardian Pharmacy is moving forward with its renovation of a building in the Kemper Meadow Business Center. We have, the EDC has also started working with a, a health uh, company for a possible expansion of its fast-growing op operations in the Crossways Industrial Park. And work is continuing on two other projects, the library expan expansion and a vibrant <coughs> communities grant application to facilitate redevelopment of the old Fitworks uh, building. And with regard to that, we're pursuing a half a million dollar state grant to leverage $2 million investment by private investors to redevelop the site and bring a craft coffee operation to Forest Park and create a new minority business development center there. Um, then on the, on the environmental awareness side, uh, report of some things happening there. The urban forestry program, reforesting Forest Park, uh, 41 households have ordered a total of 20, of 70 trees, excuse me, uh, that were, should have been delivered in uh, October, uh, early October. Uh, the tree removal program registration has ended and removals and all assessments have been begun. Tree removal will be occurring this month, next month in December and over 100 households have registered for tree assessments. Uh, we recently refurbished 14 city computers 11 were given to households with Winton Woods School District students, and four were given to the recreation program for the Senior Citizen Computer Workshop. There will be a leaf collection by people working with uh, cooperatively in partnership with us. Leaves will be taken to Rumpke and composted, and that will be taking place on Saturday, November 13th. Um, we will be coordinating with a public people working cooperatively for volunteers. Uh, the community paper shredding, if you can believe this, we collected over 12,000 pounds of paper. Approximately 231 tires were also collected that day and 121 cars participated in the event. On another note, I want to apologize for a misstatement that was made by a colleague of mine on council in a publicized forum about two weeks ago. The statement was, and I quote, we are the first planned community. This is not true. There's a long history of planned communities in the United States dating back into colonial times. In Hamilton County, the first planned community actually was Marimont. It was founded by Mary Emery and designed by John Nolan in the early 1920s. 
Our nearest neighbor to the south, Green Hills, along with Greenbelt, Maryland, and Greendale, Wisconsin, were developed by the federal government as planned communities, planned Greenbelt communities in the 1930s. This area that we know of as Forest Park was intended to be an extension of Green Hills, to be known as North Green Hills. But the Second World War intervened, and after the war, the federal government stopped developing planned communities. In 1954, two developers, Joseph Cantor and Marvin Warner, purchased this land from the federal government, and over the course of two years, laid out a master plan for Forest Park, a privately planned community. They broke ground in 1956 in the C section of the city, and five years later incorporated as the city of Forest Park. I want to sincerely apologize to the residents of Marimont and Green Hills on behalf of myself and the other members of this council for the misrepresentation made by a colleague of Forest Park as the first planned community. Marimont and Green Hills are lovely communities. They are safe and friendly. And the residents are justifiably proud of their histories. I know that the residents of Green Hills are. I am very proud of the fact that we have a shared history with Green Hills and deeply regret that someone on this council would make such a statement. I, as a public servant, firmly believe that we public servants must always be diligent and accurate in what we say publicly. In this climate in our country today, all too many politicians put their personal ambition above telling the truth to their constituents, like those who still today, nearly a year later, are claiming that the 2020 presidential election was stolen, or deny that human actions have an impact on climate change, or deny that vaccines, masking, and social distancing are efficacious to deter the spread of COVID-19. We as public servants need to rededicate ourselves to always speak the truth so that faith in science, in our government, in our elections, in our politicians, and in our democracy are restored. Thank you. Any questions for Councilwoman Hervey? Councilwoman Hervey, I have one item on the agenda for you for next week. That's the Enterprise Master Lease. Do you have anything to add? No, sir. Next report is Intergovernmental Communications and Relations. That's my committee. I have four items on the agenda for next week. Again, these all relate to the evaluation process, or three of them do. The law director prose uh, prosecutor's contract, the magistrate's contract, and the public defender's contract. In addition, I also will have on the agenda, uh, we'll finalize the amending of Chapter 31, the Rules of Counsel. And finally, the fifth item will be, uh, although it's October, uh, that would be we, we, this is the time when we first discussed the uh, winter recess. So those would be all the items. That's the end of my report. I'll answer any <coughs> questions if there are any. <coughs> Hearing none, thank you. We will move next to the mayor's report. I have no additional reports to what I have just said. Uh, I'll answer any questions if there are any. Item number seven, the next item on the agenda is the city manager's report. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Much of the things that I was gonna talk about have been talked about already, so I'll try and keep my remarks pretty sweet, short and sweet, uh, pretty sweet too. Um, first thing on a lot of folks' minds is a Halloween. Are we celebrating, and if so, when? Uh, We're going to have uh, Halloween in the city of Forest Park on October 31st. From the hours of 6 to 8 p.m., we would again, as last year, uh, recommend and highly advise that uh, everyone who takes part in that um, follows all of the COVID restrictions and is given out by the CDC and the local health departments. Make sure that, uh, and, and if you're not comfortable, just uh, again, there's no requirement to participate. Just turn out your lights and. Hopefully the kids will bypass you, but, uh, but anyway, we all know that uh, that kids will be looking forward for this. So October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. is uh, Halloween. Uh, that's the time that the, most of the county uh, is having it. The, I want to remind everyone that basketball basketball signups for the uh, for the kids leagues are going on right now. Um, take a look at our website and get involved. Still not too late. Um, 
want to let everyone know that we did just recently hire two tax clerks. Uh, we've had a lot of turnover and, and rotations through our finance department, so we're finally getting close to being back up to speed, and uh, that'll help everyone in terms of uh, the job and all of the work requirements down in the tax office, but also in the finance department as well, because a lot of the tax clerks were uh, doing double duty with, uh, with the finance in terms of payroll and some of the other things. So um, we're training those folks, and they'll be available and ready to go. They're on the job right now, and they'll be ready to go. Uh, full speed at the next tax season and help us out in terms of uh, being able to take a lot of the workload off and serve the public much better. We did receive the, um, the OKI uh, grant, but we also have received two other grants as well. I don't want to uh, publicize them yet because I don't have the official notice that we've received them, although I did notice that uh, I believe the day after the OKI grant was the, the vote for the SORTA grant. So we'll have better news and more news. Uh, not better news, but as good, more news in terms of the city's um, infrastructure grants. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, uh, have a really good year in terms of uh, leveraging some money from not only the county, but from the feds. Um, uh, and uh, we'll be having more information about that at the work session at the next council meeting. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm looking at the 31st. October 30th is our uh, Harvest Fest. Oh, it's yeah. uh, from, that's Saturday. It's from 11 to 2 p.m. It's kid-friendly. Make sure you bring your kids. Costumes are encouraged. There will be some circus uh, performers there to entertain the kids. There will be food trucks. There will be um, nonprofits that talk about you know, health. Uh, we Thrive will be a big portion of that and talking about some of the health provisions and um, making sure that we're encouraging healthy attitudes and healthy lifestyles here in Forest Park. And um, the fire department, of course, will be there. There'll be lots of trucks. Where I believe the uh, last we talked to our fire chief, we're trying to get the UC helicopter to be there as well. So hopefully the helicopter will make an appearance. And Santa may be around. You just never know. It's a little <laughs> early, but you just never know. But really, if you, well, please show up. You'll have a great time. Uh, it's kid friendly. It's main, mainly for uh, mainly for the kids and to have a good time. But it's a time when we can bring the community together and celebrate um, our togetherness, our diversity, and our inclusion. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's going to be a part of it that wants to be a part of it. And um, please show up and and enjoy uh, two or three hours with your neighbors. Any questions for city manager? Don, I just want to ask you a question. Are the flashing school lights out there? Are they working? They should be. I can check on it. Okay, because I came be. by one morning and, and um, they weren't. I didn't see them. Yeah, they're morning. supposed to be working. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at them. They, I'll check that tomorrow morning. They were working on them. I know Friday. I'm not sure if they uh, finished that up, but they were they were working on oh, those okay, and they're I, working on, on yeah. uh, last some last down the, yeah. Came they're yeah, working they, on some uh, down the drive there as well. Okay. Um, they're doing a, a lot of uh, people again. People have asked what this electric work is here. That's a, uh, out here in front of City Hall, just for the public's notice, that is uh, Duke Energy uh, completing a, uh, what they're doing is looping the system. And when they're done, they're putting in bigger poles, taller poles, and they're also putting some of it underground as it gets out past the school and down by the, by the park. They're burying some of the utilities so they're not overhead. But once the system gets looped, it supposedly, according to them, allows, um, should reduce the number of outages uh, that we experience in, in the neighborhoods around here that are tied up here. Because oh, at the gosh. time, it would only go one way, and if one of it was down, it was cut, it cut the entire system. Now they can loop it back around the other way. So it's an improvement that Duke is paying for, and they're doing all the work. But uh, it should be an improvement, and, and the worst-case scenario um, allows them to, to loop, um, to loop the, the electricity so that if one line goes down, they can still service the entire area. I have a question. Okay. Now, do we go um, out and reassess um, their work? Because oftentimes um, they don't restore our community the way they found it, um, especially when you're going down Kemper Road across the, the bridge. There was some work done, and our grass was not replaced. Um, they cut out some trees and did not replace our trees. And so how can we make them accountable to restore our community? 
um, the way it was when they came into our community because we want them to be good citizens and good partners, um, but we have to make them accountable for not restoring our community. They've been told, particularly in that area down there, that they went ahead and uh, planted grass at that area, but if that doesn't look good back the way it was, because we spent a lot of time and effort making it look good, um, that's actually their property. That's Duke property. They allow us to um, put our sign there. Um, but they're still community partners. They're yes, our partners, they and they still are in our community, even though they own that property. They own property within our community, and it's our expectation that they be good citizens, uh, partners with us. And so I drive past there every day. I live across the street, um, and um, it doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good for me as a citizen. Um, we had green grass, and you guys maintained it pretty uh, fairly well, and, and so now it just looks very bad. We've asked that they, if it doesn't take, um, that they go back and resaw that. <coughs> because you're right, we, we, we have that conversation with anybody who has work in the right-of-way, that they uh, restore it to exactly the way it was when they, when they left. Um, now, sometimes that's, that's going to be tough because they have to, like in their case, they had to cut things down to get back in there. But um, if, if they're ripping up sod and, side, or, uh, and grass, they should replace that uh, so that it, it looks as good or better than before. So, yes, we, we have that conversation with them, particularly Duke Energy is one that we have to have that all the time with. So hopefully it'll, it'll take, but if not, it'll be sodded. Thank you. Anything else for the city manager? Yeah, I have a, a quick question. Uh, Don, how, how many um, health organizations did you say were coming to Harvest Fest? Well, I know of at least one or two. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the, the 513 bus is supposed oh. to be there. Oh, yeah, that's That's going to represent the county and, and what they can do. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, We Thrive will be there. Yeah, that. I believe there's going to be a couple of other, um, I know there's, there's a, a drug treatment that's center is located oh, here that's supposed to be there sunrise. sunrise is supposed to be there um and i think oh. some of the some of the other health care facilities will, like, oh, that's... will be there as well okay but there's a there's a that's basically um the ones we have yeah and um and then hopefully we can get as many more but they're still signing up as well oh, that's, that's really good so yeah. he probably couldn't be here, but he was a representative. Yeah. So I'm supposed to get back with him. Okay. Yeah, we're still we're still recruiting okay. folks, um, and that will be one as well. Okay. Right. Okay. Next, we will go to item number eight. Other reports. The first of those being the law director, Mr. Whitecroft. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have had the opportunity to review and make some comments on it proposed ordinance that will be considered sometime in the future, and that's um, giving public notices uh, regarding uh, land usage and zoning issues. Uh, I also had an opportunity to review the new proposed CBT contract. That is the contract basically with Cincinnati Bell for services such as Phi Optics. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else to report unless there are any questions. Any questions for law director? Nine, we'll move to item B, Clerk of Council, Ms. Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to report that ordinance number 18-2021 and resolution number 23-2021 were posted as required. And that concludes my report. Any questions for Clerk of Council? Hearing none, thank you. We will now move to the next item on the agenda, that being item number nine, new business is motion, Councilwoman Herbie. I would move to suspend the, uh, the rules and requiring the reading in full and read resolution number 24-2021 through 29-2021 by title only. Second. The rule and second is that we suspend the rules requiring the reading in full and read resolutions number 24-2021 through 29-2021 by title only. Is there any discussion? Just posted as required. Any further discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend? Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Herbie? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. 
Motion to suspend passes 7 0. The first item on under new business, first resolution item A, resolution number 24 2021. Would the clerk please read this resolution <coughs> by title only? Resolution number 24 2021. A resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Herbie? I move adoption of resolution number 24-2021. Second. Moving and second that we adopt resolution 24-2021. Is there any discussion? Yeah, this is just routine. It's our um, certification to the county auditor that we accept the amount determined by the budget commission to be received from the city's inside and outside tax millage. This is just uh, another step in the budget process. The budget commission determines the amounts after they receive our tax budget that we sent them in June. And the amounts included in the certification are in line with the estimates used in the tax budget. So I would urge adoption of this resolution. Any further discussion? Eric, now with the clerk, please call the roll on resolution 24 2021. Clark? Yes. Irby? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Resolution 24-2021 passes 7-0. Next item on the agenda is item B. Resolution number 25-2021. Would the clerk please read that resolution by title only? Resolution number 25-2021. <coughs> A resolution declaring a moratorium on zoning special exceptions for 180 days and directing the zoning administrator and the planning commission to evaluate all land uses classified as special exception in the zoning code. The motion, Mr. Sylvester. I'm sorry, Dr. Moore. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I move to adopt resolution number 25-2021. Second. Second, that we adopt resolution 25 2021. Is there any discussion? Um, no, only that it was posted six days prior to our meeting. Any further discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on resolution 25 2021? Irby? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Resolution 25-2021 passes 7-0. Next item is item C, that's resolution 26-2021. The clerk please read this resolution by title only. Resolution number 26-2021. A resolution authorizing the city manager <coughs> to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission, state capital improvement and or local transportation improvement program and to execute contracts as required. Is there a motion, Mr. Sylvester? I uh, move to uh, adopt uh, resolution number 26. Second. second. Moved and second that we adopt resolution 26-2021. Is there any discussion, Mr. Sylvester? Other than what's been stated, uh, this will give the city manager uh, the authority to prepare and submit the application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission um, State Capital Improvement and Local Transportation Improvement Programs. And under the program, uh, they're planning to uh, make improvements to uh, Kemper Road from Winton Road to Hanover. And uh, the improvements will include uh, full width pavement planning, pavement repairs, asphalt uh, course and asphalt course, uh, surface course, pavement markings, and the correction of uh, drainage issues. Um, the preliminary option of the construction cost is uh, $655,903. That's been funding secured through uh, SORTA, the transit uh, infrastructure funding, and that amount is $281,804. Uh, the amount represented through the OPWC is uh, 
$738. The amount of the project cost repair by the city is $262,361. So uh, the construction time is planned for May 2022 and uh, should uh, proceed through September 2022. And with this, uh, I move that we adopt the uh, resolution. Any further discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on 26 2021? Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Kirby? Yes. Resolution 26 2021 passes 7 0. Item D, resolution number 27 2021. Would the clerk please read this resolution by title only? Resolution number 27 2021. A resolution to renew an engineering agreement with CT Consultants for engineering services to the city of Forest Park. There a motion, Councilwoman Herbie. I move to adopt resolution number 27-2021. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 27-2021. Is there any discussion? Um, yes, this and the next two resolutions are, are kind of connected. This is our annual renewal of various contractual services in the engineering uh, department that we maintain as part of our operations. This um, particular resolution with CT consultants is for, uh, our, it's our primary engineering service. And we have worked with um, this uh, owner and for many, many years. And uh, they particularly help us with our uh, traffic and civil engineering. And so I would urge adoption of this resolution. Any further discussion? Hearing now, would the clerk please call the roll on resolution 27 2021? Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Herbie? Yes. Holt? Yes. Resolution 27 2021 passes 7 0. Next item is item E, resolution number 28 2021. Would the clerk please read this resolution by title only? Resolution number 28-2021, a resolution authorizing the city manager to renew the contract for engineering services <clears throat> with Burgess and Nifel Limited. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Herbie? Yes, I move adoption of resolution number 28-2021. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 28-2021. Is there any discussion? Um, yes, this is the second of these three motions. This is um, the engineering uh, group that we generally use when uh, with our stormwater management area. And I will say that this is, uh, these are just basically contracts to be on call if we need their services. Some years we may not, other years we may. But having them under contract helps facilitate things uh, so that we don't have to come back to council and delay uh, anything that we need to do. So I would urge adoption of this resolution. Any further discussion? And now would the clerk call the roll on 28, 2021. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Herbie? Yes. Holt? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Resolution 28-2021 passes 7-0. Next item is item F, resolution number 29-2021. Uh, uh, motion? Uh, she has to read it. I'm sorry, would you read the resolution by title only? Resolution number 29-2021. A resolution authorizing the city manager to renew a contract for engineering services with Brandstetter Carroll Incorporated. Motion, Councilwoman Herbie. I uh, move to adopt resolution number 29-2021. Second. And moved and second to adopt resolution 29-2021. Is there any discussion? Uh, just briefly, this is the third of these, and this is the engineering that usually helps us on our street improvement program. So I would urge adoption of this resolution. Any further discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on resolution 29-2021. Sylvester? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Herbie? Yes. Holt? Yes. 
Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Resolution 29-2021, fashion 7-0. Next item is item G. It's a motion. Councilwoman Herbie. Yes, I would move to receive the general fund summary report as contained in the departmental reports. Second. It's been moved and second to receive the general fund summary report as contained in the departmental report. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to receive general, sign, general fund summary, let it be known by the sign of voting, aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes 7-0. Is there any further business to come before the body? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Um, in response, I, I do believe that colleague, um, um, Councilwoman Herbie, perhaps was probably referring to me earlier. And so uh, I, Chelsea Clark, um, certainly apologize if I had erred in any way in terms of what I, I guess what I had said earlier about a planned community um, some time ago. So the good thing is, is I, I do not need an apology from someone else on my behalf. And sometimes you have to charge those things to your heart, not your head. I most certainly would not try to um, have our neighbors to be offended nor any of my colleagues um, here on council in response to Marymont. I've not heard anything from Marymont, but um, I am certainly open to if they have, um, if they are concerned or certainly offended um, by anything that I've said that, that, that I can address that. Um, nothing was um, brought to my attention and I certainly take my public service extremely seriously as I've been in this community and working for over a decade, whether that's as the basketball mom or uh, in the PTA as the president, or just working um, you know, in the women's club and getting to know different neighbors and doing things like food distribution. Um, I do love this city very much and I'm gonna to continue to, um, to work very hard uh, in representation and making sure I hear from folks. I also would hope that in the future, if there's an error, that those things be, you know, that we discuss those matters because it is important and we don't wanna offend anybody. Um, rather than, rather than, um, you know, what unfortunately took took place this evening. I think too often we end up attacking each other, um, whose intentions are sincere, versus trying to have a discussion in order to, to solve these communication issues that I do apologize for. Um, furthermore, I'd, I'd also do not appreciate to have my comments likened to, um, you know, those intentional demonstrative ones that we, are, that we have seen to divide and intimidate our citizens that would be MAGA related. Um, that regime and that entity that have been divisive in this country um, is uncalled for and I think it's very dangerous to, um, to say as much and like in an air about a, um, the startup of a community to that. Uh, in fact, making such malicious and um, you know, unwarranted comments I think is pretty We've got to be very careful about that, and that's that's can be a, um, something to be concerned about. So, <coughs> lastly, I will just close with this: my apologies in the event in the event that I've offended any of my colleagues in in my response to Forest Park being the first planned community. Um, that was a slip, and um, of course to Mary Mott and others that may have also felt that way. And I invite you to, you know, have a conversation with me about those. Thank, Thank you. you. If there's no other business to be coming for the body, any other business to come before the body? Yes, ma'am. I just think as um, council uh, members, we need to make sure that we do our research. Before we disseminate information out in the community, make sure we research, okay? Um, and so it's so important that our community and our community partners get factual information regarding services, regarding history, Okay, and so just be mindful that before we do that, check the research. Absolutely. Okay, thank Absolutely. you. And again, if there's no other business to come before the body, we're adjourned. <laughs>